to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. They must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. They must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. I'm going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. Hello, everyone. I want to welcome everybody uh, to today's broadcast. Uh, Merry, Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, uh, at this moment, and then um, want to welcome all our viewers around the world that are uh, watching uh, from wherever you may be watching from. I want to welcome every one of us on this wonderful day. This is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, is a wonderful day. This is the day before Jesus was born. And what a joy. Because he was born, me and you also were born. If Jesus had not come, we have all men most miserable. And that is why we are here on this wonderful day to join every lovers of God around the world to celebrate the birth of our Savior. What a joy that he was born. If he was not born, there is no hope for all of us. It will have been eternal domination. But thank God that he sent his son to redeem us, according to the book of Galatians, redeem us from our sin, not to die in our sin. Even before we were born, we were already in inherited deficit of sin that will take us to hell. But thank God for sending his son to bring us out of uh, the down payment of damnation that we're heading for. Thank God for Jesus that came to divert the traffic so that we don't end up where our works is meant to take us. But thank God for Jesus accepting to come to save me, to save you, if you are born again. And if you are not born again, today is your day of salvation. If you are listening to me today, you might be in church and not be in Christ. I want you to uh, get yourself ready to let Jesus be the director of your life. Billy Graham once said, there is no man that accept Jesus that ever regret it. So let me share this broadcast. I am sharing it with all the uh, various platform I have. Let me share this message with somebody today. Uh, today I'll be talking to us on the benefits of the 12 months, the things God has in stock for us. In the 12 months, we'll share different uh, uh, I would like to call it different blessings of the 12 months that uh, that the Lord has made available for us and I've been sharing that with us. Uh, and I believe that today we are making progress. Yesterday we were on Recovery TV. So our attention was dealing with what people do 
during the holiday season. Now, I want to let you know that we are here today and we saw what we discussed yesterday, how to maintain your record during the holiday. And we are back to those benefits of the 12 month. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everyone that is here. I pray that your people that are here today be blessed. I pray that everyone that is here will not live here the same way. I pray that everyone that is here will, 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 will be able to move and walk into the blessing of this 12 months. Thank you because you have answered. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will take over these airwaves. Bless your people today. In this Christmas Eve, bless them. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. I want to appreciate uh, Sister Ann Matthews. Thank you for joining me from Baltimore, Maryland. Thank you. And Pastor Jack and Dickness Ann, thank you. Omolola uh, Akinpelu and uh, Mama Joke, all the way from uh, Ole. Thank you, Ma, for joining us live today. Now we are talking about the blessing of the seven months. We are talking about of this of this twelve months, the things that God has in stock for this twelve month, the benefits of this twelve months, and I believe that today somebody is going to tap into this benefit, tapping into the benefits of the 12 months. And I know that you are going to break loose into those benefits. I spoke of those things when I was talking about the, the, the captain of the, of the 12 months, which is El, El Dai. And I said it to us that that man is a man that returned from captivity and i want to let us know he returned from captivity to become a captain and that is why i am saying the same thing to you today these are one of the benefits of the 12 months no matter the captivity you have entered into this month with if you fall in line if you are aligned with god you will end this month as a captain you will not start this month as a captive and finish it as a captain. But what the Bible says there is this, in First Chronicles 27 verse 15, he said, the captain of this month is called Eldai, the man that returned from captivity. So, and I've been talking about how do you come out of captivity? How do you come out of a prison you find yourself? Who are the people that experienced it? We came to Jeremiah 52 verse 31. Uh, I spoke about, the man called King Jehoiakim that came out of captivity. And what happened? We are told that in 37 years of this man's uh, imprisonment, that God brought in a new king called Ivo Merodak. And Ivo Merodak came on board. And when he came on board, what did he do? He brought this man out of captivity. And that is why I pray for you today one of the benefits of the 12 month is that your destiny hell pass will locate you. I say your destiny hell pass will locate you. If you can shout amen like thunder, I say destiny hell pass will locate you. For that king to come out, the king of Judah, to come out of captivity, God used evil Merodak to be his helper of destiny. These are the benefits of the 12 month. In the 12 month, God dwelt sent a path of destiny. May God send a power of destiny for your release from captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord empower your helpers to be able to help you. If you believe, I want to shout amen where you are. Number two blessing or benefit of the 12 months is that you will not carry over the blessing of this year to next year. That is what God did for this man. Seven benefits God did for the king of Judah. Number one, God sent him a power of destiny. Number two, God did not allow him to carry into the next year. He did not carry over. It was on the 25th of, the, of that year that the king released him, which was tomorrow, out of 37 years of captivity. I pray for somebody that is watching me today your days of captivity, they are over in Jesus' name. You are looking forward to God's blessing. 
to be able to bring you out of your captivity. I pray for you, the God that did it for the king of Judah, it will do the same thing for you in Jesus' name. The God that did it for the king of Judah, it will do the same thing for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you wherever you are, that you will experience the hand of God in a very strange way, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all that are watching today, that you will not leave this program the same way, the same force of the spirit that helped the king of Judah to come out of captivity. That same force will land on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three blessing of the 12th month is divine surprise. We are told that on that day, 25th of 12th month, even Merodach lifted up the head of the king of Judah and brought him out of the prison. And he lifted up his head and brought him out. What the matter is there is that the name of the man is called evil Merodach. When somebody, when an evil personality begin to help you, that's a divine surprise. Imagine a person that is evil, yet is an instrument of help. It's like something white coming out of black, something good coming out of evil. I mean, that is when a person that was supposed to kill you ensure that you live, that's divine surprise. I pray for you today, you will receive divine surprise. Number four is divine lifting. The head of the king was lifted. These are the blessing of, these are the benefit of the 12th month. I pray for you watching me today. Your head shall be lifted. Number five is a came out of prison. It came out of prison. I pray for you. Whatever prison the enemy has built around you, you are coming out today in Jesus' name. You will come out of that prison. Prison is anything that makes your life uncomfortable. Prison is anything that restricts your life. Place a limit upon your life. Place an embargo on your life. No progress on one spot. I pray for you that every form of embargo, every form of imprisonment, imprisonment of lack and sickness and bondage in this season of the 12 months, you are coming out in Jesus' name. You can shout them where you are. You will come out in Jesus' name, particularly in this festive season. There are times that in a year, the president will give some people clemency and say, I give you presidential pardon, particularly during a festival. This is the festival of the birth of Jesus Christ. The council of heaven, they have met and they have decided that your time to be released has come. I prophesy for you, if you can shout amen like thunder, you will come out of your prison. I say you will come out of your prison. You will not die in your prison. I say to you, no matter where the enemy has hold you down, you will not die in that problem. That this present battle you are fighting, you will not die inside you. You will not die inside it. This present battle you are facing, you will not die inside it. I pray for for you today on this Christmas Eve, this present battle you are fighting, you are facing, you will not die inside it. I say you will not die inside it. That pain you are facing, that challenge you are facing, you will not die inside it. That challenge will not have the last chapter of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you on this day, on this day, Christmas Eve of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, that your victory shall be established. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, what do you do? There are four things I said you have to do to come out of your prison. Number one, if you want to come out of your prison, you must engage the power of prayer. I said that to us at the beginning of the week. Engage the power of prayer. Prayer was what brought Peter out of prison. So we saw that in Acts chapter 12. When prison, when and when Peter was harassed by Herod and put him in prison. And we saw what happened there. The church prayed for him. And prayer was made of the church for him. Prayer was manufactured of the church for him. When they manufactured prayer for him, it got seven, almost eight blessings. It was that prayer of the saints that bailed him out. That is what this platform is for. When the people prayed for Peter, they joined force with Peter. They prayed for him. And when they prayed for him, the, the Lord gave him double-digit blessing because we are told in Acts chapter 
12, verse 11. The Bible says that when they prayed for Peter, and the angel was sent to bring him out of prison. And when he came, as said, certainly, the Lord has delivered me from the hand of Herod and the, and the expedition of the Jews. That's what I call double deliverance. When you pray, the Lord will bring you out of the negative expectation of people. When you are in your prison, there are people that are wishing you evil that you die there. Not everybody wish you well when you when they learn that you are in problem. Peter was in problem. Peter was in prison. Herod wanted to kill him. Not only Herod, there are people that are also wishing that he would die there. So, but when they pray, the prayer delivered Peter from the hand of Herod and the negative experience on the people. I pray for that woman listening to me right now. Those negative expectations of people against your life, I say the Lord will abort it. Negative prophecy, negative dream will not come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Negative dream shall not come to pass in your life. Not only that, what other thing can bring you out of prison is praise. You must learn to praise God. That's another thing that can bring you out of prison. And that we saw that in Acts chapter 16 from verse 25. Another thing that can bring you out of prison is you must learn to thank God in your prison. We serve a God of many ways. If you pray, he will send the angel. When you praise God, he will come down himself. That's the difference. In Acts chapter Chapter 16, 25. Acts 16, 25. The Bible says, and at the midnight, Paul and Silas praying and singing him to God. See what they did? They prayed. Then they change and begin to praise God. If you pray and pray and pray and there's no edge way, turn your prayer into praising. And when they pray, when they sing praise to God, and the prisoner were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Immediately, all the doors were open. Every one chain was loosed. The keeper of the prison was awake out of sleep, seeing that the prison doors were open. It was praise that opened the prison door of Paul. I want to let you know, if you will learn to give thanks to God inside your prison, God will cause an earthquake in that your prison that will open the door. And we saw there that God came down when they praise him. In the midst of your challenges, if you will learn the act of thanking God and praising God, yet, Things may not have come. Everything may not have worked out the way you want this year. Things may not have gone the way you desire it. But one thing is sure, no matter how this year, this year has come, thank God that you are still alive. If you have nothing to thank God for, thank God you are still breathing. If you are listening to me in any part of the world, it's an evidence you are alive. The Bible says, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. The fact that you are still breathing, give thanks to God. When you thank God and you praise him, there are things God will do. Number one, when you praise God, it will step in. When you praise God, it will step in. I will tell you five things uh, you must do. Five things that happen when you praise God. Five things God did for them when they praise him. And that is what I'm going to focus on today. Five things that they did uh, that happened as they praise God. Number one, God stepped in. When you praise God, the Lord will not send an angel, the Lord will step in. I want to encourage you where you are. In this season, you may say there's no food, pastor. No food in my house. Thank God that there is mouth to eat the food. Thank God that you are alive to eat food now. Can a dead man eat? That, that you say you are, there's no food. Thank God you are bread. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. 
in that prison, to give thanks to God. That thing that doesn't work as if it's not working for you. Everything seems to be not working for you. You see, there are times you will thank God for what he has done. There are times you thank God in everything. There are times you thank God by knowledge. Knowledge means things did not work the way you want it. But the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, it says, even though the fig tree may not blossom, it said they may not be there may not be flocks in the earth. Things may not work for me. He said, yet I will rejoice. I will praise him. You must learn to praise God even when things did not work out for you. And that requires understanding. Because when you, when you complain, complain will complicate your problem. When you murmur, you murder your miracles. That is, complaining does not solve any problem. You complain, complain about this, complain about that. I've never seen anybody that complained their way out of the prison. I have never seen anybody that complained their way into breakthrough. I've never seen anybody that complained a momo, a momo, a momo, and came out of their problem. Your problem will go from small to big because God does not like murmuring. In everything, give thanks, even in that situation where you are talking about right now. Oh, they sacked me. Thank God that they, you, you only lost your job. You didn't lose your life. Thank God you didn't lose your life. In everything, I want to let you know, see the place where they are praising God, in prison. These are key to come out of your prison. And they are beating them. They beat them up. I don't know about you. That's why Paul said, I bear scars of service to God in my body. Reading that today, he said, I bear on my body wounds and scars of service to God. I have served God to the point where I have scars on my body. I have wounds. They beating me because of serving God. Have you gone to that stage where they beat you up for serving God, where you bled for serving God? Paul said, I bear on my body scars, marks of pain, marks for serving God. They beat them up while they were bleeding. They were praising God. I don't know how many 21st century believers can still be praising God when you are bleeding. That is the state in which they are. That was sacrifice of praise. You can praise God in that prison. That situation that looks like prison for you, thank God, you can't come out of that prison complaining. You can only come out of that prison praising God. Maybe that was why the king of Judah came out of his prison. In Jeremiah 52, verse 31, he was king of Judah. Remember his, his track record. Because he was the king of Judah, I think that was one of the reasons why God opened the door for him. He was there for 37 years. And that is why the Bible says that king in Jeremiah 52, verse 32, that king is king of Judah. No matter how it has been for you this year, still find a reason to give thanks. Always look for reason to praise God, even in your prison that you are. Never allow Satan to succeed in pushing you against God by complaining and murmuring and offenses and bitterness and sorrow against God. Look at the testimony of David. He said, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, even in good time or bad time. And these are things you must learn to do. When this realm becomes your lifestyle, you are a candidate for freedom you will be released from captivity in that prison, in that thing that does not look, you don't like it, it's, not, it's as if God is not answering your prayer. It's as if you are speaking English and God is not hearing your cry. Give him thanks. Let me say, you can pray amiss, you can thank God amiss. You can praise God amiss. Father, I thank you. Even in this situation I find myself, I thank you. 
I count you faithful. Even in this state, in this pain, in this discomfort, in this lack of money, in this lack, in this state, in this pain, Lord, I thank you. When you start doing that, you are inviting God to bring you out of your prison. What other thing happened when they gave thanks? Number one, God stepped in. Number two, the foundation of that prison was shaken. When they praised God, the foundation of the prison was shaken. If you learn to give thanks to God in your prison, the Lord will visit the foundation of that prison. We saw it here. The Bible says, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was an earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken as you thank God, as you praise God, in the midst of the challenges you are going through, God will step down. Remember that the heart is God's footstool. The heart is the footstool of God. And when they were praising God, I believe God was tapping his feet. And I think God was tapping his feet. And they were singing, you've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. That is why your name is forevermore. They were praising God in the midst of their bleeding. They were praising God. God was moved because they ought to be complaining. But they were praising God in the midst of their challenges. And what happened? God, while he was tapping his feet, foundation of the prison began to shake. I pray for you today as you praise God in that situation that you are facing the foundation of that prison where you are shall begin to shake. Every prison has foundation. Every prison has foundation. I want to encourage you today. As you praise God, I see the foundation of your prison begin to shake in Jesus' name. Number three, when they praise God, the Bible says, and when they did that, all the doors of all, all the doors were open. Every one chain was loosed. All the, all the, all the, all the doors, all the chains, all the chains, all the chains that the enemy have been using to hold you in captivity, they will be loosed. Every instrument of captivity is being destroyed as you give thanks. This year, yes, is a very wonderful year, to say the least. You know this year has been very wonderful. You must learn to give thanks that you are alive. 1.5 million has died. That's enough to give him thanks. Yes, 1.5 million has died this year already in the grave. Do they were alive last year, but they are not alive this year again. God gave you an opportunity to see another Christmas tomorrow. Come on, bless him. You may not have a chicken to kill, but thank God that you are alive. <clears throat> 1.5 has died this year, but you have not died. Then when you give thanks, every chain, chains, everything holding you in captivity, they will break. They will break off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. No, that is number three, all prison door were open. Number four, every man's chains were loosed, were broken of them. They were broken of their life. I pray for you that every chain that is hanging around your destiny, I see those chains, I see them being removed out of your life in Jesus' mighty name. What is the next blessing? That they saw when they praised God. When they praised God, we are told the keeper of the prison was saved himself and his household. We are told that when the man saw what happened, he said, the man supposing that they have run away, the man wanted to kill himself. Paul said, don't do it. And when he came, he took them to his house. He was trembling. He said, sir, what must I do to be saved? And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved, you and your household. 
and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and, and all that was in his household. And they helped them to wash their, 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 their stripe and blood away. And that was how they got saved. A family was saved from that. Their arrester became saved. The one that was their jailer became born again, came to Jesus. That is, there are testimonies that your praise will bring, that will bring Jesus, that will bring Jesus to the life of people. There are testimonies that can bring people to God more than even preaching. There are testimonies that can open the door to the salvation of people, even more than your preaching. And that is why I'm saying to all of you here, you must learn to give thanks to God. Remember, the man, the captain of this month, is called Eldai. First Chronicles 27, verse 15. Eldai. It means the man that returned from captivity. You must learn the act of returning to God to give thanks. You must learn that act. You must learn the act of giving thanks to God. We saw uh, in these five blessings that these are the things you will see if you will learn to give thanks to God. In 2 Chronicles 32, 2 Chronicles 32, verse 25, the Bible spoke about this man here, 2 Chronicles 32, 25. He said, it, but Ezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown to him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore, wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. It did not return. It did not return. You must learn the act of returning. He said, it did not return according to the favor shown him. Now, many of us that are listening to me this year or this hour, God has shown you some favor. How do I know? God protected you this year. Your protection is a function of favor. Psalm 5 verse 12. He said, thou will bless the righteous as with the shield of favor. Psalm 5 verse 12. In other words, the reason why you lived where others died is because God placed his shield of favor around you. Favor is a defense. Favor is a protective cover. Favor is your PPE. Favor is your mask. Among other things, put on your mask, do your sanitizer, do everything they say you should do. But beyond that, put on favor. Let the forces of favor cover you. The force of favor. Yes, the one you are putting on can protest certain things, but cannot protect against, against, against devils. That is why the favor of God can be at work in your life if you have eyes to see. Thank him for his favor that God has kept you alive. You are not among those that died this year. It's enough to give thanks. So wherever you are, you are going to stop here today. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. If you have none to thank God for, thank God that you are alive. And you are going to join me today wherever you are. You're going to give thanks and say, Father, I thank you that you have brought me to see another Christmas Eve. Father, I thank you. Wherever you are, open your mouth and give thanks. Appreciate God. Bless his name. Thank him for his goodness in your life. Bless his name. Let the Lord know you are grateful because the Bible says only the living, only the living can praise you as I do this day. That's Isaiah 38. And that is why I'm saying to you today, Isaiah 38 verse 19, the living, the living man, he shall praise you as I do this day. The father shall make known the truth to their children. Only the living. The Bible says here, in verse 18, for Shiloh can, she, El cannot thank you. 
death cannot press you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living man, it shall press you as I do this day. Only the living can praise God. So are you alive? Are you living? Yes, you are living because you are watching me right now. Give thanks for those that will watch now, those that will watch later. Give thanks. Open your mouth where you are and say, Father, I thank you. I am a living. I'm among the living. I'm among the living. And I'm praising you today. Only the living can praise him. Lift up your voice and bless the Lord. Father, I thank you today. I bless your name. I give you praise that I am alive. I'm among the living. I praise you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. I am among the living today. I glorify your name. Thank you for seeing another Christmas tomorrow. I appreciate you, Jesus, that I am not in the mortuary today. I am in the sanctuary. I am not in the mortuary. I am in the sanctuary. Go ahead and bless him. Wherever you are right now, Father, I thank you that I am in the sanctuary today, listening to your word. I am not in the mortuary. Wherever you are, lift up your voice and give him thanks. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. Father, we appreciate you that you have kept us alive in this season. We have not buried. I have not buried my wife. I have not buried my children. I have not buried my loved ones. Lord, I thank you. Open your mouth and give him thanks. God has kept you alive. You are among the living. Bless his name right now. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you. Even in the midst of what looked like a challenge, I count you faithful. I count you faithful. I praise your name. I bless your name. I appreciate you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Because I know you are faithful. I judge you faithful. Like Abraham, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. I join Abraham to praise God today. I join Abrahamic faith from Romans 4.20. The Bible says he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It takes strong faith to give thanks when things are not going right. That's strong faith. That is faith. Lord, I thank you. I join Abrahamic order of faith to say thank you for this Christmas. Thank you. For my head, thank you. For my children, thank you. I go out every day, come back safely, thank you. Thank you for protection. Thank you for watching over me. Lord, I thank you for carrying me from January to December. Thank you because you are the Alpha and the Omega. You have been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. That is why your name is forevermore. Open your mouth where you are. Begin to give thanks in that situation right now that you are facing. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Your praise is invitation for God's presence. Your praise is God's invitation to bring you out of prison. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for that sister that is watching me, touching us right now. Open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping me till now. 24th of December. Wow, you have been good, Lord, in my life. Thank you, Jesus. I glorify your name. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I am counted to be among the living. I thank you. Thank you for tender mercy. Oh, Psalm 103, verse 4. He said, Who crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercy? Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Lord, I thank you for redeeming my life from destruction of COVID 19 and the new strain. My Father, thank you for redeeming my life from destruction. Where others have died, I have lived. I'm counted among the living today. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Even in my situation right now, I thank you. In my state, I thank you. With my head, I thank you. With my mouth, I praise you. I will bless you at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. I thank you for your faithfulness. Even though the fig tree may not have blossom, things may not have worked the way I desire, but I thank you. You redeem my life from destruction. You redeem my life from destruction. Father, I thank you today. I praise you. I praise you. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. That is how to do it. Give thanks to him in your prison. Sing to him in your prison. And watch God step in and bring you out of your prison. If you are there, you are not born again, I want you to say this word after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you are giving your life to Christ, that is the first step to God stepping into your affairs. That is the first step for God turning things around for you. I want you to know that the Lord is at work in your life. And as you praise God in that prison, it will bring you out. When you learn to praise God in your prison, you are bringing God into your problem. The way Daniel brought God into the prison, Daniel was praising God three times a day. And they, end, they put him in the den of lions. And what happened? The lion of the tribe of Judah followed him there. When the, when the lion saw the tribe of lion of Judah, lions don't eat lion. They bow down. <laughs> they refuse to eat because they were busy worshiping the lion of Judah, that, that lion of praise that Daniel was worshiping. You cannot die in your prison, praising God. I want to say that to you. You cannot die in any prison where you are praising God. You cannot die in a challenge where you are praising God inside it, where you count God faithful and bless his name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I want to thank every one of you that joined us today. And like I said, if you are there, you are not born again. You take that prayer, you give your life to Jesus, ask him to forgive you of your sins, and ask him to cleanse you, and ask him to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. That's how to pray that prayer. You may take that prayer, Lord Jesus, say this word after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now, forgive me my sins, wash me with your blood, today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray for you today, no matter the challenges you are facing, as you pray and praise him, I see you come out of your prison. I see God raising a helpers for you. I see God empowering your helpers to bring you out of the prison where you find yourself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to know that we will be coming your way uh, tomorrow again, the same time tomorrow. And tomorrow we are going to be praising God. We are going to be having different singers joining us on this line to thank God and bless God and thank him. We are going to be praising God. Glory to God in the highest. That's all we're going to be doing tomorrow. Join me tomorrow on this same line, 8 p.m. We'll be having Christmas praise. We are going to be having some jingo, 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 jingo bear. We are going to be praising God on this line. Join us tomorrow as we put what we are saying to work. We want to bless him. Don't be among the people that do Christmas and forget about the celebrants. When you go to a bad day and the celebrant is not there, who will cut the cake? Jesus is the reason for the season. So let's come together to bless him. He said, oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Uh -huh. So the come beholding, so these are, we are going to come to worship him. We have come to worship him. We have come to worship him. That's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Don't forget, join me here at 8 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to be a great time as we bless God. He's the king of angels. Let's bless him. Join me tomorrow for that. I, I want to say to you, please do me a favor. And what is that favor? I want you to follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook so that when I come live, you will get notification. Follow me in two places, on Facebook and on YouTube. 
so that when I come on Facebook Live, you can get notification. And when I go face, uh, when I go YouTube Live, you also get it. You will get our message on Destiny Monday TV. Go to our YouTube. Do me this favor. Give me this as Christmas gift. Go to our YouTube page, Destiny Monday TV. Type on YouTube, Destiny Monday TV, and subscribe. Help me subscribe there. Subscribe to our channel. And on this platform, I want you to follow me on this platform. Like the page and share with your friends. Share with somebody. Let somebody get to this message so they can be blessed. So these are the things I want to do for me. Thank you for all of that are sharing uh, this message uh, on, the, on the Facebook. And I want to say on the behalf of uh, myself, my wife, all our pastoral team in London and in America, I want to say Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas to all of you. I, I pray that the blessing of this season will rest upon your household. Peace will rest upon you. It is done in Jesus' name. I thank every one of you that are watching right now. I appreciate you all. There's a lot of names here today. I won't be able to call everybody, but I want to just thank all of you. Join me tomorrow at the same time, and we'll be here again to bless the name of the Lord. Till I come your way again, Merry Christmas. And I want to let you know that also, uh, as you come on this platform, I want to come tomorrow expecting God is going to bless you very wonderfully. He will bless you. So please, and I know you will not miss out of the agenda and the plan of God for your life. By next week, I will start talking about things you need to know to prepare yourself for 2021. What you need to do to prepare yourself as we begin to see the face of God. God bless you. See you tomorrow. And you can also get my books. They are available. Um, I believe they'll be there on the platform uh, where you can see them. I have them here. Two books I'm saying you can get Master Key to Freedom and Operating in Deliverance, how to come out of your chains and prison. Get these books to be a blessing to you. If you need the book, you just be able to uh, type in there that I want the book and our team will tell you what to do to get those books. God bless you. See you tomorrow. I love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye, everybody. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is the one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that